Hi everyone. So auditing assets is a key requirement for hardware asset management practitioners. The process today for a lot of customers is extremely manual and as a result of that it's painful and can be time consuming. Quite often auditors will walk around an asset estate location, so like an office or a warehouse or a stock room, and they'll walk around with a checklist of assets that they expect to see in that location and that's typically a printout and then they mark that up or check a box when they see something that they're supposed to see um, maybe scribble in some notes for assets that they see in that location that they weren't expecting to see in that location and then they walk back to their desks and they'll start inputting those records into their system uh, of course, if they're new assets, now they have to you know, create those records from scratch, uh, link those records to uh, uh, an asset model, for example, uh, and then uh, make some notes about you know, where that asset was found, what time it was found, um, you know, any other information associated to that asset will all have to be manually entered. So again, long story short, it is a highly manual process. With the ServiceNow agent app with the hardware asset management product, we allow customers to leverage either their existing barcode scanning technologies, so ZebraWorks, for example, or alternatively, just use the ServiceNow Agent app and the camera on the back of your iPhone or Android device and scan your barcodes, so your asset tags and your serial numbers, if, if you've coded both of them, um, or either or works just fine. The idea is either a 2D or a 3D printed barcode or a QR code, we support several um, several tags. And then you can scan them in real time as you walk about that location. And you don't necessarily have to be online during the scanning. So if you're in a location that's um, you know receiving poor cellular or Wi-Fi connectivity, that's fine. It'll store the scan barcodes on the device cache. And then the moment you're back online, if you walk back to your office or to, to another physical location with better internet access, uh, it will automatically update those records in, into your CMDB uh, within the ServiceNow instance. Uh, the idea with the process is that you know, you're prescriptively assigning a location, so again, an office location or a warehouse or a stock room, to an asset practitioner on a scheduled basis, and then having that individual assign that task, conduct the activity, be equipped with information as to what they expect to receive at that at that specific location as they're going about their their audit activity. And then when they're when they're completed their activity, they now have a list of assets that they thought they they should be seeing there as opposed to the assets they actually do see there, as well as any new assets that have to be onboarded that weren't expected at that location. And all of this happens automatically. So these assets get uh, tagged with uh, an audit complete uh, audit completeness notification within the asset record as well as the audit record itself. So you can see that you're governing your assets to to you know the, the appropriate SLAs that you have in place. And then new assets that get brought on to your CMDB through this activity will now be timestamped and quite evident to your auditors how this asset came into your system. And, you know, it wasn't brought in through a traditional process, but it was caught through this audit activity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pivot to the ServiceNow instance to show you exactly how you can go ahead and schedule these activities within the platform. So what you're seeing now is the hardware asset management workspace. In this instance, we're going to navigate directly to the asset inventory module on the left. And within the inventory module, you'll see along the top a series of tabs for workflows and processes that are governed within this module. Before we go into the Asset Audits tab, uh, I want to take a look at all of my stock rooms and specifically the stock room where we're going to create an Asset Audit record. We're going to go down to the San Diego stock room location and just take a look at the assets that are housed in that location or that we expect to see in that location. We're going to jump directly into the Hardware tab. So this is now going to show me all of the assets that are currently in stock and available within this location. There's also some consumable assets in there. So in this case, I've got a Blu-ray player and an LCD monitor. Now these assets are tagged RA0001 through 0003. 
So when I go and create an asset audit, it's going to tell me that it's expecting to find these three assets and these two consumables. And so as I go through my exercise and start scanning assets, it's going to tell me in real time whether it's finding things that it should or if it's going to create assets that it wasn't supposed to find in that location. So I'm going to go into the inventory section again and we're going to go to asset audits. So right away I'm going to be able to see all of the, ad, uh, the asset audits that have either taken place or that are in progress um, uh, or that are new and to be scheduled into the future. So in this case I have some demo data just for for the one, it's currently in process, it's assigned to Beth. She's auditing the stock room. And so far, um, out of you know 13 assets um, that were supposed to be expected, she's found all 13. So this one was, was created a while ago, so we're gonna create a new one, and we're going to do this on demand. So we're not going to schedule it out in the future, we're, we're going to schedule it for, for today. Right? And the, the location that I want to audit is the San Diego stock room, that's the one that we saw earlier and we'll just assign it to Betty. Yeah, she's one of the asset managers. I'm just gonna save that audit request. And now through capabilities on the platform, Betty will be notified that she has a new, newly assigned asset audit to her queue. Uh, I'm signed in as a system administrator as always, so just to accelerate what that process looks like. So now let's imagine that, you know, because I'm a system administrator, I can do this. I can, I can now pivot and change roles so now I am going to play the role of Betty, the asset manager, and we're going to pull up Betty's mobile phone so we can see all of the requests that have come in uh, for various activities, including asset audits, and we'll actually go through the audit experience on mobile. So I'm just gonna bring over my mobile phone onto the screen here so you should not be able to see that. And we're going to go directly into the agent app on my mobile device. So here we are at a quick glance, we can see some information that is quickly and readily available to the asset manager. So you can look up your assets on the top here. You can go into your stock room and location audits. Um, you can go into your procurement module at the bottom and see your POs that are coming up. Um, I can go back to the asset view. And when I want to create an asset, I can do that as well here. But again, we're, we're going to, to look at audits. So you can see here, that just a couple minutes ago, I had created a stockroom audit for San Diego Stockroom and was assigned to Betty. So let's click into that audit request. And let's, let's start the scanning activity now. So you'll see the camera has popped up. And as you can see, I've got some barcodes that are pre-printed out. Uh, so I'm gonna scan a few of them. So let's, let's start by scanning RA002. And now let's scan RA003. And let's also scan, let's say 004. Okay, so I just scanned three barcodes. Now you probably remember they're not exactly the same three barcodes that I was expecting to find. I was supposed to find RA0001 down to three. So I scanned two to four. So two of the three assets should be found and and the others uh, and the other one should, should be considered a net new asset. Now, before I hit submit, I'm actually gonna go into the stock room um, uh, the stock audit that I just created behind the scenes here. So you can see me refresh this here. So there's that audit request that I just created for Betty. Uh, so that second one. So I'm gonna go directly into that record. So you can see when I submit it on mobile, you should see these update in real time, right? So I'm just gonna hit submit on my phone now. So as I hit submit, you can see that it tells me that the values and some of these attributes have been modified by the individual logged into the mobile phone. So I'm gonna move my mobile phone out of the way. We don't need it right now. So you can see in this case, I was logged in as an admin. If I was logged in as Betty, it, it would tell me that Betty's modified these values. It, it changes the status of the audit to in progress. So if someone wants to come and see at any point in time, you know, Betty is already doing what, what she's supposed to be doing, right? Uh, I can see two of the assets that were expected to be found in that location were found, right? Um, I, I, you know, uh, was expecting to find two other assets, but I didn't find them. And if you remember, there were two consumables in that location as well, right? And now it's also found one new asset. So if I go into the expected assets view, these are the three assets that I should have found in there, right? So uh, the monitor, 
uh, doesn't have the consumable asset, um, the second one, which was the Blu-ray player, uh, because that was, that was uh, tagged as consumable and not as an asset. You can also go into the scanned assets now to see that it is expected, as expected, it found RA002 and 003, but it also found 004, which is a, a net new asset, which you know we weren't expecting to find in there. So now if I wanted to go in and actually look at this asset and onboard this and say, hey, this, this, is an, this was an oversight, you know, this, this was an asset that we should have onboarded during one of our, uh, our asset lifecycle journeys, right? So an event lifecycle event could have been a service request for an order, it could be a procurement request, but this was missed. So now I've been able to identify assets that are in my inventory that I don't have records for. And the neat thing is that because it knows where this was scanned, it knows it was scanned in the San Diego stockroom location, it's automatically plugged in details about the asset that it knows. So it knows the asset tag because we scanned it in. If I had scanned the serial number as well, if that was a required field for my asset audit process, it would have bought in the serial number as well. Again, if you've got broken out your location hierarchy by uh, by aisles and spaces and, and maybe even pallets, uh, it would be able to attribute those directly into the CMDB, right? So now I can identify, okay, so the asset that I just scanned in, um, it, it was, let's say, a computer, um, and more specifically, it was a computer that I know perhaps, right? So let's say it was a was a MacBook or was a was an ASUS device, whatever it is. Now I'm I'm you know prescriptively going through and as part of my model approved models within my CMDB, I'm just attributing those to this asset that I I literally just onboarded formally. And if you go further down and in, in, into the uh, attribute table, you're going to see that it's flagged this audit activity against the asset. So now I can see that this asset's actually been audited against this audit request, and I can go directly back into the audit record. It can see who audited this asset. So I've got that full visibility on, on not just the attributes of the asset, but how this asset came into my CMDB. So now I can go ahead and save this, this asset record, and it should update the model with um, uh, the details that I had s selected as part of the model. There's obviously some uh, business rules in here that will prevent me from doing things that I, I shouldn't be able to do. So if, let's say in this case, the serial number is a mandatory field in my CMDB, it's not gonna let me uh, create this asset formally without having that you know, information in there. So we'll just you know, create a test serial number and we'll hit save. And again, this is configurable. If, if I didn't want that to be a mandatory field, um, I could have had that. I could have had that suppressed. So now what it's doing is it's obviously saving the asset record. Um, you know, it, it's put it into an in stock and available state because it knows it's in that location. Uh, as part of the uh, the audit uh, experience, once you know you've you've completed doing the work uh, associated to an audit, you can go ahead and mark that that audit as completed, and it'll change the status to completed, and it'll publish out the audit results. So now, as an asset manager, I can go in and I can see the status of all of my completed audits. So you can obviously filter these by the types of audit status that you're looking for. Um, and you can then go in and pull in some additional reporting if needed on you know, the assets that were, that were scanned as part of the audit and you can report those back internally. So hopefully this was uh, beneficial. Um, it'll help you explain um, the value of automating the, the audit inventory process. Thank you for watching.